Welcome everyone to the Hearthstone Global Games. We have one match left for you this week and to run you through the action is going to be myself, Dan Gaskin and this man here, Lorinda. It's been a pleasure to be working alongside you all these weeks, Neil. It's been a long stretch but I've enjoyed nearly all of it apart from the bits where I sat next to you. Oh, I knew you were going to say it. I gave you an opportunity to say something nice. No, genuinely, I've actually really enjoyed this. I think it's been a great few weeks with you, Gaskin. It has indeed and we've been cheering together and you can cheer as well at home you can do it on Twitch. Now, if you want to cheer for your favorite team, if you are a fan of whoever, it doesn't matter if it's one of the teams playing or a team that has already played, you can get involved by linking your account as <laughs> Neil gets caught trying to lean for a drink during the graphics. Uh, that's how much total cheers we've had so far. It's incredible to see how the whole community has got involved. You get all of these marvelous awful, uh, rewards if you do cheer, including a special card back, emotes, and all of the good stuff. And bits and pieces as well, there are other goals for community. I think the first one was reached at 8 million, where everyone who's donated over 700 bits will get an extra two packs. And it is tracking, of course, who you're donating to and who these bits are going toward, just to try and get a little bit of national pride behind you. But the United States still clear there with the cheers. But we don't really need to be talking about the United States too much today because they are not going to be playing. Instead, we have Singapore versus New Zealand, but they were in the United States group. Yeah, and uh, United States dumpstered down to the 0-1 bracket. They've got to win two in a row to go to BlizzCon now. But that means that these two teams, the winner tonight, they're on the way. Yes, someone is going to be going to BlizzCon. It's going to be either Singapore or New Zealand. Here is the bracket for you. Uh, Chinese Taipei are also in this group. They were knocked down by New Zealand. It was a very close fought series between Singapore and United States, and we saw what it meant to the Singaporean players when they were able to kill off the UK, uh, the US. Sorry, <laughs> I've already got the UK on the brain. Yeah, Bulgaria did that last night. They yeah. got UK down to that one-one bracket, and they've overtaken Singapore in the cheers. So Singapore, if you're out there, you need to sort of get donating to your team, get them back ahead. It's only a few thousand. I'm sure the Singapore community will be right behind the team. And speaking of the teams, we will take a look at these rosters. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with any of these players, where have you been for the last, what, six, seven weeks? You seven should, weeks. You should know them by now. Neil, do you know them? No. Oh, okay. Well, Who are fine. these people? Obviously, uh, that Singapore team, we've become... I feel like we've seen them more of them than the New Zealand one, because New Zealand's been on this sort of Friday slot or off stream once or twice. But yep. I think New Zealand have done well. They've proved that they had that they had that bit of a nightmare at the start of the tournament with the Shutterwalk. Um, but last year they did really well. This year they've got a chance to go even further, get themselves into BlizzCon. And BlizzCon would be incredible for either of these sides, but more so probably because when you look at all of the global games teams that are around, are you really predicting Singapore and New Zealand to be making it to the top eight when we've eliminated teams like Czech Republic? who won the Global Games last yeah. year. It, it's amazing, really, to think that some of these lesser teams are getting the chance to maybe even win BlizzCon. I think Singapore might have been a bit of an oversight on our part, but New Zealand going to stay with it. I think it's still a surprise there this far. Well, let's have a look at the picks and the bans and see how this matchup is going to play out. Uh, Singapore and New Zealand both lose their Quest Rogue. And you know what that means. What does it mean, Lorinda? They don't want to play against Quest Rogue. Yeah, and that seems to have been a common <laughs> pattern that has occurred it definitely this week. We didn't really notice patterns for quite some time. I think week to week, the bands were changing constantly, but now it just seems that if Quest Rogue is brought, just get rid of it. And I think that's cause, I think in the early weeks, some teams try to bring all aggro lineups and leave the Quest Rogue up and just make sure they got a free win there. Uh, but those all aggro lineups have been slowly but surely pretty much dumpstered out of the meta. You see their Paladins picked last because um, and there's only one odd Paladin there. The one is actually an OTK Paladin. But we are seeing this slower meta game. God, it was slower yesterday. Um, really developed now. And that means that Quest Rogue is just good. And it was interesting that Priest was selected as one of the first uh, uh, choices for Singapore. It's not often you see Priest actually being one of the the things you want to put in your lineup, if you're <laughs> left with it. Uh, let's see how the matchup actually plays out, though, after the selection phase. Uh, of course, it is best of five. All nine classes are brought, but of course, they ban them away. And then we are left with this screen. We're going to start things off with Shaman versus Mage. I believe this is going to be the face mage for Singapore, and it is going to be the Shutterwalk Shaman for New Zealand. And then we have Death Rattle Hunter versus Control Priest. 
Odd Paladin versus Evenlock, the Odd Warrior versus, I believe, is it the Control Paladin or is it the uh, OTK Paladin? Uh, the New Zealand's Paladin is the OTK Paladin, I believe, so it's going to be fun to watch that one. Oh, uh, no, it's not. It's not the OTK. Is it not? No, it's uh, it's got Uther in it, but it's the Kangol's Endless Army version. Oh, my version goodness. With the eggs, it's the more control variant. And then the final game is Death Rattle Hunter versus Token Druid. So that's to give you an idea of what you're going to be watching. Whether we'll get to game five, that will remain to be seen. Here is a little glimpse at your first players, though. It's going to be Pathra going up first for New Zealand. And as always, the Singaporean team, they're all gathered together ready for this one. That pool table doesn't get much action. Why not? I don't know. It doesn't seem to. Because they're all playing Hearthstone. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe after they win and they can have a celebratory, celebratory game of pool. They'll probably do something else. Maybe. Like cheer a bit. Yeah, maybe they'll just cheer a little bit. But uh, uh, Pathra is going to be kicking this off for New Zealand. Uh, she's kind of shown what she's made of, I, I'd have to say, throughout this year's Global Games and last year's yeah. Global Games as well. Yeah, she's helped keep that team together, I think. I think she does quite a bit for this team. Um, I have to do quite a lot here. Though. I know that yesterday, I feel a bit differently to, to Derek and Falk about this. I think the Mage is quite strongly favoured in this matchup. Well, the only reason why... Um the only reason why you wouldn't feel favoured, I guess, is just because of the healing ability that is available for New Zealand. If you think about it, double healing rain, 24 extra health, that's going to be quite hard to get through if you are an aggro mage. But that does require both of those healing rains to be drawn. Hagatha can be very important. That's a little bit of extra armour. And you could find more healing rains as well. So that being said, I think it's easier to stick a yes. board against this Shudderwalk and you get a lot more damage out of your minions. And while we're talking about that, obviously, the key card is in hand anyway, which is Arcane Intellect. Oh, no. Aluneth. Aluneth is uh, fairly important, I would say. So I imagine Pathra will also be trying to find that weapon removal that is usually available for the, um, for the Shudderwalk Shaman. Uh, but that's some early game minions. At least that's uh, a way of answering any pressure that might be coming out from Singapore. Yeah, the thing with the early pressure, it's very handy. You obviously want that Mana Worm, which is the, the key card in the deck, apart from Aluneth. But you do have time to set up, like, Double Sorcerer's Apprentice, Aluneth, Luna Turns, and just do... You saw it uh, a few weeks ago. Absolutely huge amounts of damage in one turn. And that's why Pyroblast is no longer played in basically any of these decks. Just going to check to make sure I'm not being silly. Yeah, it's not in this deck. It just means that Luna doesn't have any roadblocks when it wants to go off. Yeah, thanks to the Cosmic Anomaly, you can just put so much damage into your opponent now. If you can stick an Anomaly, get Luna on the go, suddenly these Cinder Storms, these Arcane Missiles that are usually pretty lackluster, suddenly become deadly and can just win you the game. We did see a turn of, what was it, something like 24, 25 damage just in one turn. And it could have been more. They're going for coin ping here. Uh, I think they could have done with a lot of time on this turn because they want to know where to use that coin. Coin of Luneth is a big deal if you can get there. But because of the texture of their hand, they're probably going to Arcane Intellect on three a lot of the time. Sometimes Apprentice Fire Frostbolt on three. This draw is absolutely critical. Okay, so now they're going to have to just challenge the board of the Apprentice, most likely. Looks like Sequinox there is not completely sure, but... Get that minion damage in before the Shudderwalk has a chance to get control of the game. New Zealand's hesitant to use this Earthshock, but... Again, the opposite is true. If you defend that minion damage early on, then you can't do it with Frostbolts and Fireballs low. There's not enough damage in the deck if the minions don't do anything. Yeah, one of the few times that actually rolling the 1-1 one, one totem was a benefit. Yeah. Her being able to trade. And this is something that not everyone would do here. By playing Luna on three, I, I personally, I agree with that. I think uh -huh. it is a fantastic play. But there are a lot of people that would wait for that kind of power turn that you keep talking about. Yeah, there are. And learning to play this deck, it isn't just sort of roll your face across the keyboard like some people think. Who would ever say that? I think you may have said it before. No. It is a lot about when to make sure your Luna sticks. If you can get two or three cards out of it now and trust your deck, I mean, to draw a decent card and go for it, you can get in these situations where you just get this incremental advantage rather than this completely crazy one. No real use for Shooting Star in the deck anyway. Obviously, you'd love to do the, the maximum damage here to clear up with, with buffs, but this is fine. And that is a lovely pick up here for, for Crumpled. They are going to lose their, their Luna, but look at what it's done. 
yeah, even though it's not a huge amount, it was able to make this turn an okay one to a fantastic turn indeed. And the little bit of extra card draw is significant. The fact they have a Lunith already in hand means that they don't have to have like an extreme power Luna turn to get them into the game. Uh, it's kind of done it. She's kind of done her job. Yeah, and that pickup with the Kirin tool is going to be the next turn. Unless a healing totem is rolled here, a lot of damage is going to start going face. I mean, you might chuckle to yourself a little bit and say, well, it's only going to be four damage most times. <laughs> four damage sometimes. But fours a lot. You don't need too many fours. Force that healing rain out if it's even there. And again, I'm, I'm a little bit biased because I've played a lot of this side of the, the matchup. Um, but I do feel the mage is heavily favoured here. Not heavily, but sort of 60 40, something like that. Personally. I mean, I've played this matchup on the Shadowwalk Shaman side, and I would have to agree with you. It does right. feel like the mage is favoured <laughs> because it, it feels like if you don't find that removal, if you don't stop their early pressure, then you just really struggle with the amount of damage they're actually able to put out consistently. And you don't feel like you've got that win condition. Like with Shudderwalk, you normally either kill all their stuff and they run out of stuff, so you win, or you do your Shudderwalk thing that you do and you win that way. But against Mage, it's like, try not to die for a lot of turns and then establish a board and win the game that way. But it takes so long, the Mage does keep just throwing stuff at you. And as a reminder, this is a rematch of a game we already saw in the Swiss. Singapore did take down New Zealand 3-2 in, uh, I think it was round four of the Swiss. They wouldn't mind doing that again tonight. With yep. Everything on the line. It doesn't Come. matter if it's a 3-0 or a 3-2, as long as they get to BlizzCon. That's all they want right now. They consider playing the Arcanologist, but putting down too many minions at once, despite the fact you need that damage, I've been talking about endlessly since we started. Um, you don't have many minions in your deck, so getting through one here and one there, rather than walking to Volcano or Lightning Storm, is the way they're proceeding. See how the hand's filling up? You don't have to go crazy with this deck. It can play as a, a sort of mid-range grindy deck to some extent. More than people think, at least. But now they're going to be challenged to fight for board. Yeah, and it's at what point you give up that board as well. Oh, how that shooting star would be nice here. Ah. But then they wouldn't have the anomaly because they wouldn't have cycled the shooting star. That is correct, good sir. Uh, that's how card games unfortunately or fortunately work, just depending on which side of the board you are on. A lot to discuss here, like, obviously things like frost bolting the life drinker is very tempting, but you do want that damage to go face, and they're going to glyph a roo and try and find themselves something useful here. Hey, it's a mirror image. I heard that's really good in aggro mage. It is really good in aggro mage. <laughs> And I'm sticking by it. Nope. I was watching a lot of the games yesterday going, if that missile was a mirror image, or if this, this was a mirror image, because that's what a sort of nice guy I am. And actually, Flame Strike, even though maybe some, some would suggest it's counterintuitive to how you want to approach a game of Aggro Mage, sometimes you do just need to remove your opponent's board so that this minion damage can go face. Like, yep. let's say they play, I don't know, Saronite Chain Gang plus a 3-3 three -three here. Next turn, you're just like, ha, Flame Strike. And you send all that damage to face, and then your opponent's suddenly forced to play healing range that they might have. Yeah, and they've New Zealand have set their stall out for doing that for this game. They've shown that, that we're going to try and get things on board, challenge your few minions. If we get rid of them, we're going to be okay. And I don't think they'll expect this flame strike at all here. So at some point in this game, they are just going to get completely wiped out. I mean, imagine if much later on New Zealand go for Hagatha into a Shudderwalk. And end up with all these 6-3 Shudderwalks hanging around. <laughs> That's going to be funny. I mean, whenever a Shudderwalk's hanging around, I don't know if it's particularly funny. I'd say it's pretty scary. Yeah, you're scared of dinosaurs and Shudderwalks and things, aren't you? Well, I don't know if a Shudderwalk doesn't really count as a dinosaur. It's just a thing. It's a horrible, disgusting oh, thing. Both with how it approaches a game of Hearthstone and how it <laughs> looks. Uh, but you can see now how desperate New Zealand are to try and stop this damage from coming in by using a Hex on a 4-3, but to be honest, there's not really going to be that big a target for the Hex anyway, so use it while you've got it. Yeah, sets up Hagatha next turn as well, just defend some damage in the meantime. And now I think we'll see Singapore take quite a long time over this turn. They have an absolute wealth of options available to them. A Luneth might actually just not get played in this game. Yeah, this is why I was looking at this hand, and I was saying the, the fact that they've been able to draw because of Stargazer Luna earlier on, suddenly the Luneth doesn't really matter. And sometimes the Luneth can just kill you quicker as well. Like, you might not be able to find that damage, 
and you might not be able to give yourself the time to get that grindy game that you were talking about. They're trying to work out what this means, this hex. Because it either means that your opponents are panicking like crazy, or they've got absolutely all the removal. I saw them hovering over the Cosmic Anomaly here with, oh, are they out of stuff? And I think they, they checked themselves, like, oh, actually, no, they're not out of stuff. This is a... We're going to Haggatha turn. Let's not give them that. Time runs out on me. Not found anything of use there. And this is actually starting to drift away the Shutter Walk, but again, there's still so much damage can come in from Singapore. Yeah, the benefit for New Zealand is they have Hagatha, which is healing in theory. That five extra armor is very important in the later stages of this game, but they will be slightly concerned they've not picked up one of those healing reigns because these volcanoes, they're not really going to matter too much now. The early minion pressure has already happened. As long as they've got ways of removing anomalies once they're actually onto the board, then I think they'll be happy. I think they're pretty happy right now, I must admit. Agatha's another five healing as well, but again, doesn't do much else. Do you know what it does do? Gives you random spells. Maybe that can be more healing reigns. Yeah. Not many things to play to get those random spells, but you're right, could be healing reigns. And also, I, I say this quite often, but shaman spells are good at dealing with smallish minions. And mages minions are pretty small, at least health-wise. Well, it's opened up yet another free board here for Singapore, which means well, these minions, they can just plop them down and say, all right, well, let's go for minion pressure yet again. We haven't had to use our fireballs yet. Oh. We've still got a frostbolt available. Those cinder storms are still waiting to be picked up. Yeah, they're going to wait to see, or they're going to work out how they feel about this apprentice, what they want to do maybe on turn 10 to get the maximum anomaly apprentice stuff going on. But it's not that exciting. They obviously trying to do an extra 12 damage to what they can see there. We'll be expecting a healing rain. And they're going to protect this board with counter spell. And that's going to guarantee them five damage or so next turn. Or so they should think. Yeah, I mean, nothing's guaranteed. It's Hearthstone. So if Pathura is worried about this uh, five damage, you could just go Hex into Volcano. Yep, because they know what the secrets are. One of the downsides of Mage running very tight on secrets these days is that you know exactly what those secrets are. Not even a space to... There's not a secret worth putting in as a third one. I've seen people play Mirror Entity. It doesn't really do much. Especially in revealed lists. It's just like, oh, we'll play our yeah. bad thing. On ladder, sometimes it might catch you off guard and then you play into it because you're expecting it to be... Yeah, you get a giant off them. Something yeah. else like... It looks cool when it works, but doesn't work that often. If this Sorcerer's Apprentice sticks around, next turn could be a decent amount of damage. We need to stick around for two turns, really, and I think that's too long. <clears throat> Here comes Shoulder Walk. Shoulder Walk that is just going to be gobbled up by explosive runes. There's been a Chain Gang and a Glacial Shard. Just clear with a Hagatha. But well, unfortunately, you still take damage because of Hagatha as well. Like, that's the annoying part. And they did get that Ancestral Healing, which we were able to proc the Counterspell with. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's at least something. It means they've got these he this Hex, this Volcano to deal with boards, but... Now it's getting very difficult for Singapore, though, despite me saying that there's plenty of damage you can get the minions through. They haven't really got them through well. New Zealand have made some very obscure-looking plays to make sure that doesn't happen. All right, but now New Zealand have just thrown away their win condition, really. This, this Shadow Walk can be killed. The Shadow Walk Shaman suddenly doesn't have a Shadow Walk. Science. What it does have is six more cards in their deck. Yes. I think that's actually their win condition now, is fatigue. The thing we were talking about yesterday, when, when all else fails, just fatigue every deck in the game, no matter what you want to do. And if this sticks, they win, but it doesn't. New Zealand have many ways of blowing things up still. But still, those healing reigns is what New Zealand, New Zealand are going to be looking for. And I said there's no Shutter Walk, but Blazing, Ooh. that is a way of getting a Shutter Walk. <laughs> it happens very rarely, but this is usually the win condition. We talk about a possibility. There is no Shutter Walk this time. But sometimes when we say, oh, there's no Shutter Walk left, this is like the, the one out. What a whole load of plop in their hand there. 
but any minion at all is handy and have proven me to be a liar I think in this game by just getting decent control of the game early on. I like the way Singapore approached it, I think trying to hold on to a lot of stuff was the way forward but now they've been forced into this lunette in this game will not go on much longer either way. They have got another Glyph. They've got two Cinder Storms still available. So it's quite there is damage. still damage, still another <coughs> Anomaly as well. And we've been talking about this 12 healing. Well, as it happens, New Zealand haven't got it. No. Nope. You know, so... They have chances to get it. They can Zola back a Life Drinker as well to get even more health and to get what even to more do. minions to, to use Hagatha's ability to get spells. But I think you're feeling relatively comfortable if you are in... Uh, New Zealand's shoes, or Pathra's shoes in particular. And now the fireball to face, and this is because Singapore have very limited time, which means they have very limited mana to get anything done. They have lots of cards with the word mana written on them. But these things have got two volcanoes to get through. Mana Addict is a very interesting inclusion into the deck of Mage. Only one counter spell though, so they're not going to be able to set up a way to defend against these volcanoes. That's usual, it's not some sort of weird tech. And the Gluttonous Ooze, of course, does its job killing off a Lunith. Unfortunately, you don't get any armor because a Lunith doesn't have any attack, but I think stopping Singapore drawing too quickly, maybe it's not that important here, but Stormbringer, that's pretty impactful. Maybe New Zealand can start to push for lethal of their own now. They're at a comfortable life total, and they can turn these minions into some big old boys. And but wasps and girls and oozes. But Cosmic Anomaly and Shooting Star is available to clear off most of this board. And you've got Arcane Missiles there as well. You've got Mana and Matter Addict. You can even just use Flame Strike if you want to go down the route of just putting a Mana Worm on the board with it. Yeah, how much do you want to commit? You know they must have removal by now. There's two Lightning Storms and two Volcanoes they haven't seen. Yeah. So not good for them. So maybe you just put like mana worm and then you flame yeah, strike. Yeah, that's what you do. Or maybe mana addict to make sure they have to kill it. Because you want to start using your spells. The mana. Well, they're just gonna use the two things to get buffed. Fair enough. If they haven't got volcano or lightning storm, good luck. If they have got lightning storm, or maybe it whiffs. Very tidily played by New Zealand so far. Just paying very little attention to winning the game, knowing that they will win anyway. Just got to completely and utterly outlast this. I think this might be the play where Singapore play their Cosmic Anomaly and just play their stuff and hope it works. And it's not going to. Well, I mean, you say it's not going to work. Cosmic Anom Anomaly plus Fireball Shooting Star and Arcane Missiles. It's a lot. It's a decent amount of damage. That's 11 damage that can go to face. Uh, well, it all will because right? they were shooting still to yep. guarantee it. That's 13 damage that goes to face. I guess. Yeah. Suddenly a cinder storm off the top. Oh. I mean, they're lucky that um, that's really good by New Zealand. They're realizing this is just like adding health to their face. Oh, and healing rain off the top. This is the key card, this glyph. If this can find a oh if this can find a pyro, maybe they get there. It doesn't, in fact it finds garbage, but Astral Rift is tempting. Because maybe they find something stupid like Archmage Antonidas. That would be fairly stupid and fairly crazy. Lord oh, Cho, no. however. Like the two worst things they could find. They don't need armor because they're going to die, and they don't need what even is going on. And I think maybe New Zealand are going to turn the corner here now. They've got Healing Rain available. The fact this Mana Tide Totem is a 3-6 really just foils Singapore's previous plan of Anomaly and Shooting Star. Yeah, New Zealand have got the, apart from the, the customary ice fishing you always seem to get, they've got pretty good pickups from their Hagatha as well. This lightning bolt's going to get a lot of work done to stop this Anomaly forever sticking. That is such a bad pickup from that card. Yeah, okay, they're going for this. They're going for, okay, if you can't kill our Anomaly, we win. We've known for some time that this has been very killable. 
Yeah, it's killable for, through a variety of ways as well. I think the lightning bolt that has been picked up by Hagatha is the most punishing of ways because it's just a random spell. And you know what? Sometimes there is an element of that of Hearthstone where you use the kind of the randomly generated card just to try and frustrate your opponent a little bit more. If I have lethal and I can do it with a card that's already in my deck or a card that's been generated by Hagatha. Oh, you know I'm using that lava burst, Lorinda. You're such a nut I am, person. I am Me too, though. pushing that aggro mage further and further down because they deserve it. Oh, playing it depends on which deck it is. If it's like Quest Rogue, oh, I'm using the randomly generated <laughs> card. But if it's, if it's an honourable deck, oh, yeah. like, like what? And if it's been an honourable game. Honourable deck right now. Um, even lock. I'd say it's fairly honourable. <laughs> Three mana, eight, eight. No. But yeah, that's probably a good call. Depends if my opponent's been BMing as well. Yeah, I'll, if they've been BMing, they're just getting the full-on rope treatment and then top deck card and a few greetings. Imagine having have the Paladin one now. Oh, yeah? Remember your Paladin, you go, hello? hello yeah, hello. I don't think the, the voice lines have been released yet for we the Paladin. We know what But we know what it's going to say. And we had an idea of how that game could have gone, but Pathra and New Zealand, they kind of changed the way we thought it was going to go. Face Mage does have the ability just to rattle through the Shadowhawk Shaman, but a very well-piloted game by Pathra there to put them 1-0 up in this series. And uh, you know why it's an important series, Neil? Don't know. Tell me. The winner gets to go to BlizzCon, Neil. Oh, my. I think we may have mentioned it, but yeah, going to BlizzCon is the absolute highlight of any gamer's year, I think, with StarCraft and other games there as well, all taking part. Overwatch will have a big event. I mean... Yeah, there might be some Hearthstone there while they're at it. BlizzCon is a, a massive place to be, and, Bl and Hearthstone Finals being at BlizzCon is also fantastic. Yeah, I'm really pleased about that. Um, I think it is the right place for the Global Games Finals, because yep. it is a sort of national thing, and have a separate World Championships for the players also sort of makes sense, because that was such a big success last year. Let's take a look at the matchup screen and see what game number two is going to be in this series then. It is a hunter versus a priest, and it's going to be the control priest for Singapore and the death rattle hunter for New Zealand. Uh, so my my first impressions of this matchup is it's a relatively good one for control priest because of mm. one card and one card alone. Psychic screen. Yes, I agree entirely. And I think we used to feel that the hunter was favoured, and then we sort of watched it a few times, thought about it a few times, and looked at it. It's like, no. Because the priest, the AoE with the priest, normally what happens against Hunter, you clear out their stuff, and the Hunter plays more stuff, and you're like, ah. Oh. With the priest, all that happens, and then they kill you. They do kill you. The because... priest just kills you. You don't care about their reload. You just ignore these cubes and things, and the... abs them, and get you... the game's gone long enough, you've got some mind blast by then. Yeah, because the Hunter doesn't really have healing, typically, outside of beasts yeah. that have been built by Rexar. Um, you can usually just, like, barrel them down and then you get those mind blasts later on and the hunter's like, huh, okay, well, you've been psychic screaming my minions, I've not been able to put any pressure on you. But that's if you get psychic scream and that's if you get to turn seven. Sometimes you yes. just don't get to turn seven against Death Rattle Hunter. Yeah, that is a thing that can happen, definitely. We've seen a lot of matchups where the hunter doesn't go for the sort of the early game so much recently where they go for the Rexar grind, but mm -hmm. this is one where if they can just get a load of five fives on the board, the priest doesn't like it. It doesn't like it. It starts crying. Even though five fives you can usually deal with with like Anduin or something. If it's too early and Anduin's not arrived, he's waiting. But it's just too late. Anduin cries because you've died on turn seven. Not even the chance to play him. It's a shame, isn't it? It is a shame. No, it's not shaman. It's uh, it's a priest. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how you say shaman. See, if you didn't say shaman like a weirdo, then it would be fine. That's the British pronunciation of shaman. Is that shaman? Is that another fact? Yeah, and you know how you say geyser in English? How? It's geezer. Geezer. Flame geezer. Oh, right, geezer. Diamond geezer. All right, game number two then. New Zealand's chance to go 2-0 up here if they can find that early start that we were talking about with the hunter. But it is going to be tough when uh, the priest does have the ability to shuffle everything back in. And this is a, an all right hand to start with for Singapore. They've got some early game minions to contest an early start from New Zealand. See how much they decide to keep, though. Obviously, you want the Cleric. I presume you want the Pyromancer. The Dustbreaker is an interesting one because it doesn't kill any of the 5-5s. Five and what it does do is kill eggs. It does kill eggs. I like the Pyromancer to draw cards. Just put, well, not, not necessarily just to draw cards, but to play on two. And you can pop eggs with that. Okay. But you know what? Singapore don't like it. And I'm, I'm behind Singapore. Four brains behind are better most than one. People. There you go, the Pyromancer. It's fine. 
We'll see what happens. <clears throat> now we get to see exactly what's going on. There's two of us here, not one. I said there was one brain. Okay, that's fine. Deathstalker Vexar picked up for New Zealand, so all the lifesteal stuff, you know, it's going to happen as well. Yeah, Rexar is an extremely important uh, pickup here, actually. I feel like we've seen everybody who plays Hunter just always have Rexar on six in this tournament. Except yes. there was a team that threw away Rexar in a really bad matchup. And I don't know why they did it. Was that Singapore? Might have been Singapore. Uh, my, my, my brain that I claimed to be good has failed me. I do remember the situation. It did seem right at the time, but I can't there, remember it well enough. There have certainly been some questionable Mulligan decisions throughout the Hearthstone Global Games. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mulligan is a lot of Hearthstone these days, and Mulligan decisions are not easy at all. I saw a tweet from Zelay today who had been looking at the stats for Togwaggle Druid. Uh -huh. And one of the cards in the deck is better in your Mulligan than Wild Growth. Yeah, and it's Ultimate Infestation. <laughs> and it's Ultimate Infestation? What's even going on? Just keep this 10 drop, I can't play. So it turns out Tom60229 was correct. Let's not do that one. <laughs> Let chat decide. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, watch the VODs of last year's World Finals, and you'll work it out. But this has worked out nicely for Singapore. Even though Kalaseth was picked up and uh, all the memes of, oh, it's only two drop, they found it, it's going to buff their minions up. Singapore will be quite happy that they have managed to wrestle control of the board nice and early here. And Skulking Geist is extremely important in this matchup. And I don't think I need to tell you why. As you're the one with the one brain in this relationship. Right. Tell them why. Hold on, this is a relationship now? <laughs> it's a... A professional working yeah. relationship. All right, cool. Uh, the reason why, because, well, look at New Zealand's hand, Florinda. Oh. Play deads, get rid of those. Thank you for humoring me. That's okay. I thought I'd let you sound good for once. You don't get many chances. It's, this is true. Uh, I will take any time in the spotlight. What? Uh, this early damage has been important here from Singapore. If they can get a little bit more through at any point, those Mind Blasts will start to become a bit more terrifying. Yeah, they can. Jump, they might just win through minion pressure. Uh, the Nightscale Matriarch is uh, an interesting inclusion. We have seen a few Tekken decisions. That is, in well, instead of Benedictus, for example. Good. <laughs> that, as I suddenly get flashbacks from yesterday. I'm in favour of anything that you play in place of Benedictus, although that Benedictus did look good yesterday. I, I, I think have every to be team, honest. if they hadn't submitted for next week, should have brought it for next week. I have to be honest. I did get home and I put Benedictus in my priest and it did some work. I got home and I watched the VOD of that game. And you cried. Chat cried? Well, I, I saw a few people that said, uh, the commentators told me to go and make a coffee, so I did. <laughs> I came back in the game. I, I, it's still going on. Or so. oh, no. Excellent. Good advice here from, from us. Meanwhile, this game has reached a bit of a stalemate for the time being. There is no Psychic Scream, but also there is no Wall of Five Fives that are needed. And we just have this sad Tar Creeper taking on nothing. Yeah, but what is important for New Zealand is they now can start building beasts oh. and start demanding answers from Singapore. And if they can encourage a few Psychic Screams just on some relatively large beasts, I think they'll be quite happy. Singapore had a bit of a, a giggle when they picked up this because they were going to just slam the Geist. Mm -hmm. And now they have a decision, well, do we want one more card before we slam this Geist? Shall we Dustbreaker and shield it up? I think I'd be okay with that, <coughs> mainly because there's nothing on the board that you will imagine is going to be, like, cubed into play dead. So your only punish is suddenly egg into, like, double play dead or something. But... If they had the ability to do that, they would have already done it. So you're, they're relying on a top deck, so you can take that risk if you would like. A lot of thinking and not much talking going on there from Singapore. Kind of the opposite of us. Yeah, they can actually um, just read each other's minds. It's okay. They communicate telepathically. Really? Uh-huh. That's why they're doing so well, then. It is why they're doing so well. I'm going to have to do something. I feel like the dust breaker just feels natural at this point. Well, I like also drawing cards to get closer to Shadow Visions and get closer to having your Mind Blast, for example. Get closer to your Alex Straza. Get closer to your win condition before you allow the Hunter to just get out of control with their beasts. Yeah, and it's, I mean, 
Pressure is a little bit of an exaggeration, but it is some form of damage they're going to be doing. And it is relevant when you get those Mind Blasts. George McCall gives you the highest chance of being able to play a beast this turn. So maybe worth taking, because otherwise you're just your not doing anything. Your turn's grim otherwise, isn't yeah. it? And you never know, you might put a Swamp King Dread in your hand as well. Should talk about the Alex Straza here from Singapore. That's going to be a massive deal in the next few turns. If this um, does break and get through the armor over the course of a couple of turns, Alex Straza soon ties up the rest. Yeah, and uh, there is going to be little to no answer to that Alex Straza because the Skulking Geist is going to be destroying Hunter's Mark. No, it's not. They're super tempted to play it right now. Are they really that worried about a 3-5? Mm, no, are. they're worried about the Geist. Yeah, but I mean... Okay, they can judge by how long the turn took on turn 6. I, mean, I think they may have done it. I mean, there was, it was a weird turn. Let's play Dustbreaker on our top deck one drop. That's a weird turn. Yeah. And somebody on that New Zealand team has gone, you know what, I think we're getting Geisted here. Yeah, a really good recognition from the New Zealand side. Oh, but now, suddenly this hand is looking relatively underwhelming. Yeah, suddenly when all your cards have been ripped out of it. Until Houndmaster Shaw turns up. Although, you know what? Houndmaster Shaw hasn't done um, hasn't done much as of late. I haven't seen the crazy games like we are used to seeing where Houndmaster Shaw gets on the board and then it gets cubed and then played dead. And I think that's because people have started to respect Shaw more than yeah. they used to back in the day. Yeah, they're going into that turn. If they've got any sort of removal, it's ready for sure, and they're letting other things live. It's ready for sure. Okay. They don't need my comments explaining to them. Oh, was it a purpose, <laughs> purposeful joke? You'll never know. Huh? I'll tell you later. That's usually how I approach talking to you. I don't really know what you're on about, but I, I just listen anyway. Do you really know? Ah, yeah, 50-50. <coughs> Depends how relevant what you're actually saying is. A bit weird here, this priest is basically out minioning the hunter at the moment. That's not going to last for long with the, obviously the Builder Beast in progress, but I Singapore wonder. have got a weird version of their win condition going on here. A few nice turns, a few, and a few nice plays available here for Singapore. Um, you can clear this board with like Duskbreaker into then Twilight Drake. That's how they're looking at it. And it's relatively intimidating. Or you can go down the other route. You can Duskbreaker, and then you can play a Northshire Cleric, heal up, and then trade. And then you get through a little bit more of your cards. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to get some more cards. Priest never has enough cards. Some some decks, you know, don't mind taking their time a little bit. It's a card game, though, and cards are good in card games. Who'd have thought it? And you've got to remember, this was Singapore's first pick, their Priest. Yes. In the pick and bands phase, they said, we want Priest, we want this deck. Because, to be honest, it performs fairly well with the decks that were left over for New Zealand. With the plan that they've gone for, Priest is nice. I do like the fact that these teams keep their decks for the whole of this group stage. Agreed. I think it means <clears throat> a little bit more strategy can come in. You've seen how the picks and bands have gone in your opponent's other matches. And you can see if you've missed something, or see if they missed something, and add even more complexity to the pick band for part of it. Sure does mean that New Zealand can tidy up this board nice and comfortably, and demand an answer from Singapore. Otherwise, it starts to get a little bit, up, a little bit scary. Acolyte would have been nice. Steal the shore and everything just goes in. Ooh. But it didn't happen. And we must mention the Keliseth as well. It's making these minions just that little bit more irritating and taking them out of range a lot of the time. Yeah, the Keliseth that was drawn on to, I believe. Mm -hmm. How many times has that happened now? Three or four. <laughs> and I'm trying to find a way to actually kill off this shore. And I think Singapore are trying to do the same. There's no easy oh, way. There's probably some horribly bad ways. Well, I'm With looking at the Shadow Vision. Yeah, things. but. But they don't look good. I mean, if you have no minions on the board, then Shaw's not that great. True. But you are encouraging the 
the Shaw Cube Oof, mess that goes on. All right, can't deal with it, so we're going to hit you. That'll show her. Yeah, get rid of some of this armor. Because when that armor's gone, no mind blasts have been found yet. Shadow Vision's there, waiting to pick some up. Because Singapore are in a little bit of a hurry, I'd say. Because if you allow your opponent to build too many beasts, then they are going to have that chance of lifesteal. Lifesteal is very high on the list of builder beast possibilities. And that's why Rexar is so good, because you get lifesteal, you get rush. It's crazy. The versatility of Rexar is insane. Yeah, and so is the predictability. You get what you want quite often. Like it's not just pure randomness. It's like you've got a good idea what you're going to get over the course of three or four turns. So if you plan ahead, you will get the things you're looking for. I see a lot of these hands where there's you know, the zombies just... Uh, the, sorry, the, the exploding bat thing just sits there waiting. The bloke bat. Bloke bat. Lifesteal there already. Bloodworm. One of the worst minions with lifesteal, to be honest. Because it's too big and clunky. You never yeah. even play it. Pretty tasty. Poisonous hyena. Who's laughing now? Well, not Jack Attack. It does seem fairly focused here. Still Aye. not huge, insane amounts of pressure coming from the priest, but you've always got to think about that King Crush and take eight or nine of your health total. And still no psychic screams. And the thing is, you want to be using these shadow visions now for Mind Blast, yes. realistically. And because of this poison, suddenly Alex Straza to face isn't very good. New Zealand also playing around Anduin pretty tidily. Yep. Not not committing any massive minions to the board. And Singapore have a load of good looking cards that don't seem to do a lot. No, this hand is relatively bad, to be honest, and suddenly New Zealand are starting to gain control of this matchup thanks to Rexar. And like you say, they really don't want to just Shadow Visions into Psychic Scream, so if there's only 14 cards in the deck, so I might just rip you off the top and put it back down. Yeah. This isn't the Psychic Scream board, so they are just going to get aggressive with Alex Straza. They know it's just going to be gobbled up by this poisonous hyena. And yeah, that's the best case. Maybe another poisonous thing leaps out and the hyena gets bigger and then, oh. Well, there is a, a, a bloat bat there. I don't know what was picked with that bloat bat, but it looks like it does have lifesteal as well. One of the perils of casting Rexar games is that you can never get the thing on the screen no matter how hard you try. Nope, not happening. And sometimes you can put two and two together with the life totals and whatnot. Uh huh. Oh, and that's going to make the hyena bigger. And the cube's going to go in, and the hyena. Oh. Make it stop. Health total's going back up. This is absolutely nuts. And this is now where suddenly Shadow Visions into Psychic Scream yes. might have to be used. It's like all they've got. Here's the Twilight Acolyte. You are way too late, or are you? So you can Twilight Acolyte and Kabal Shadow Priest take sure, and then suddenly your Shadow Priest, well, all your minions suddenly can attack. And you'd have a Shadow Priest and an Acolyte. I'm sure they're just going to end doing it away. The light has betrayed me. I guess the Shaw can't do too much damage this turn. And then next turn they can steal it onto a a board that's been reloaded and use it there. Okay. And get behind this. And it, it's more comfortable than it looked. It looked pretty dire, actually. It did look really nasty. But the fact that Anduin can be played and the ping to deal with the 4-2. Oh. If they couldn't have dealt with the 4-2, then suddenly, the, and they're still facing 8 damage, then it's not so comfortable. Well, they're going to hit him with a big, scary dinosaur. Yeah, now you've seen Anduin gone. And you say, all right, well, answer this bad boy. And they can, multiple different ways. They've got to start panicking now if they want more Mind Blasts too. Now they've drawn the first one. 
So you can kill, you can you can um, get rid of this by acolyting either of the two minions and stealing them, putting the right number of things into the crush afterwards. Shadowy thoughts. Well, if you're going to go down that route, then surely you should steal Shaw. I think so. Because otherwise you are leaving Shaw on the board, and mm -hmm. that's four damage that's going to hit you in the face, and suddenly you might just be dead from a charged beast. So you could go Twilight Acolyte and Cabal Shadow Priest onto Shaw. Shadow and then just go in with the, the minions into the crush and keep your own Shaw so that your minions, which you still got some of, but you are only on eight. And there are minions that can just kill you here from Build a Beast. <laughs> wow. So much to deal with. Oh, that's that one second mind They're blast. not getting it their way at all with these mind blasts. Let's point out there's 16 available at any time they want to for Singapore. So even though they look like they're miles behind, I mean, they're struggling, but they're not, like, doomed. So they could start sending some of these pings face if they wanted to. They have a Divine Hymn to start healing them up just to keep them at a respectable life total. They can also now have Shadow Visions for Psychic Scream because the Mind Blasts have been drawn. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't look like much fun, though. You should be able to deal with this. Sad little army. Darkness speaks to me. I try to get something out of the night scale, but it's looking really awkward to set up. They have to just respect this board. <clears throat> and I imagine the divine hymn comes in to finish yeah. it off. Oh, but you are just getting through by the skin of your teeth at the moment as the uh... yeah, the sure did a lot of work a sure that could have been killed earlier on as well IMB Cow seems tasty here it's usually pretty good way of dealing with Drake's yeah and this looks like a Really irritating minion. They can't deal with this without shuffling it back into the deck, I don't think. Yeah, this might just be uh, a panic Psychic Scream. But they, there's only eight cards left. Two Psychic Screams are in there. They might just draw it naturally. There's also Shadow Visions, which means if they can keep the one they've got somehow, they can do the old and somehow then can control the board. Too many somehows. They can do Shadow Visions into Shadow Visions and ping each time. Yeah, it's, it's a time-honoured way of getting that job it, done, but it's too slow. It is fairly slow. Ooh. Giggly Mentor puts a wall in the way. That might buy them the time they're looking for to start doing that sort of stuff. Just the one Mossy Horror in the list for New Zealand as well that they've already played, so you can be fairly mm. confident that your Giggling Inventors will survive. I love how we build up a game, talk about the important card, and it just doesn't turn up. Two Psychic Streams, where are you? You're ruining our cast. No, I, th I mean... Uh, we, we said that's how the priest is going to win, and if the priest loses, well, because they didn't get the card that they, they well, it's very important that they Cre needed. Creative play with the cube has been important for New Zealand too. But notice where these pings are going as well, and the, yeah. the life total is starting to deplete now. I mean, this is lethal next turn if all these minions aren't dealt with, which of course they will be, but that's how close it's getting. 16 for the Mind Blast and the Pings, and then 4 for the Minions, that's more than 19. So, suddenly, from nowhere... Well, just be because of this Giggling Inventor, without it, they were looking oh. like they were struggling a little bit. But because the Giggling is allowed to just protect their face from this 6-3 Owl Beast Zombie thing... Owl Beast Zombie. And now New Zealand have to try and work out what beasts are left. They were thinking about just playing Katrina, but that could pull a high main. And then you're quite worried. And then you're very, very worried because you're dead. So it might have to just be like, which would Grizzly bust Dark Reaper? And of course, they know that the options there, they know how the deck works, they know they're facing down lethal. And Jack Attack's running out of time here, and they haven't made a decision yet. Okay, that's a decision. I like just putting a lot of 
stuff on the board to try and set up lethal next turn. The trouble is with a lot of stuff is the psychic screen. Keep talking about that card, but they don't want to use it because obviously the reload is eternal for the Vexilla. Uh, I, I think a psychic, psychic scream's all right here. The I feel like it's a good time. The only issue is you have to play Shadow Visions first. It would be great if you could fit in a ping here. Yeah, ping, really Psychic Scream, they're down to 17. Next turn, you've got ping plus deal with other minions. Shadowy thoughts. That's a very deep in thought here. He's, he's spotted something, but I'm not sure if he can work it out in time, whatever it is. Shadows grow short. Oh, they're fitting some pings in. They're saying we don't think we can die next turn. They're going master spell we'll instead. Get in and set up lethal for next turn. This is risky. It is, but it's setting up lethal. And it's hard to lose from here this turn. This is really tidy. Life steal needed here for New Zealand. Or winning. That's no lifesteal, that's no charge. Or rush, or anything. I don't know what this... We don't know, yeah, we can't say things for sure, and uh, sorry about that, we don't always get to see what all of the built beasts do. But judging by this, this Katrina's just gonna be plopped onto the board, and you can see Sequinox and the rest of the boys start to celebrate because they have that damage available. Mind Blast plus your pings. The Priest does get the job done. It was close, very close towards the end. And they did it without a Psychic Scream. But the lack of lifesteal from the Hunter was really shown there. Considering how many beasts they built and the time, amount of times they whiffed on that lifesteal, Singapore will be relieved to tie this series up. That is a win they probably should have got anyway. But it would have gone quite badly if they had lost it. I think a lot of people would have lost that game, though. They were very, very patient with their Shadow Visions right until the end there, and using it for that mass dispel to get through a cheeky three, which sets up the lethal, and just relying on Annoyatrons. Imagine relying on Annoyatrons. Yeah, without that Giggling Inventor top deck, maybe that is a Hunter victory. But uh, either way, uh, that was a thrilling matchup, and we have some more coming your way right after this. Singapore and New Zealand are all tied up here in the Hearthstone Global Games for a spot at BlizzCon. They will be the second team to qualify into that top eight. We have already sent one team into that top eight, haven't we, Lorinda? We have. We sent Bulgaria there last night, and they, if you're looking at their pictures, looking at the interview we nearly had, and all of their tweets and stuff, they are absolutely jubilant well, going there. The interview that could have been, but it was Silent Storm just evidently being Exciting. silent. Uh, how apt and fitting, but... Back to the game in hand, it's New Zealand versus Singapore, and now it's time to change guard. It's time to change the pilot. Ting Tong is going to be taking over now, whereas Singapore, obviously, they're all in the rooms. They're all just rotating round, which is nice and easy, I'd say. Yeah, we should have done that more. Would you just want to rotate round? Yeah. You want to sit in this chair? I'd like to. This is our last cast. Falk has told me I can't ever touch that chair. I tell you what, if we have another break, you can sit in this chair. Okay, let's deal. Do that. All right. Seems like a deal to me. Uh, but rules are you have to then host. Okay. All right, deal. Cool. Hello, everybody, and welcome. You don't have to do it yet. Okay. Right. So, we have the even Warlock against the Odd Paladin. Uh, I think everybody's been bringing Odd Paladin pretty much, apart from New Zealand, but, you know, get to that later. Um, and it hasn't been doing that well in this tournament, I feel. <laughs> it's struggled in where it's hit bad matchups. Yeah. That's fair. Like, I don't know, it's it's done all right. It's done its job where it should have done its job, and it's failed where it should have failed. It's kind of, the, it's one of those decks, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the Paladins just always get left till the end, because no one wants to ban it, and no one wants to pick it. It's just, poor Paladin. It's not as bad as last year, when I believe it was Warlock just didn't have a deck. And Shaman just didn't have a deck. That was quite entertaining. But unfortunately... This is another one of those bad matchups for the Odd Paladin. Yep. Um, against the Even Lock, you are really going to struggle because of that card right there. Yeah, and the Hellfire as well. Like we saw one yesterday, I think, where the, the Warlock just failed to draw any removal at all. 
and just got tickled to death over the course of some time. But in general, if they draw one removal spell, they're in a good spot. If they draw two, they're in a great spot. And it's just about waiting until turn four is where things get interesting because everybody knows that the Paladin's big spot is the Fungal Mancer, those level ups on five. But also, Singapore know that New Zealand know. So they want to go into that turn to lose as little as possible on turn four. Yeah, it's not quite as favoured as like a control lock is, for example, right. against Paladin. The even lock certainly can tap its way into its own demise, where they feel like they're comfortable and they think, ah, oh, you know what, I'll tap into my hooked reavers, my mountain giants, I'll be fine. And suddenly Paladin just goes, ha, my 1-1s one become 3-3s, three I bash through everything, and they find victory. We saw Denmark in one of their earlier matches, weeks four or five, um, in a situation looking a little bit like this one coming up, where they didn't Hellfire or Defile or anything, and they just took a massive amount of damage on one turn to establish themselves a Mountain Giant on board. Then they Hellfired, taking even more damage, but then they had a Mountain Giant. And they did the old big comeback and just hit you for eight every turn. And that soon stops a Paladin from killing you because they're dead. Yeah, you can just outrace them with large, scary minions. And it's how greedy you want to be this turn. New Zealand, they can just defile and defile they shall. I think... The times where I have been too greedy with Defile and removal in general against Paladin, I usually get punished. Yeah, we saw how New Zealand weren't greedy with their removal against the Mage earlier either. They just got rid of stuff, like, right from the start. And they're doing that again now, making sure we've got more removal. Don't care that it gives our hand away a little bit. We quite clearly have more, otherwise we would never have made mm. that play. And Singapore discussing the implications of that now. And the implications are, here's some more dudes. For duty. This is all about setting up Fungal Mansa on a five. There is one Divine Favour available for Singapore in this Paladin, which oh, usually is going to get some work done against the Evenlock. Makes a big difference, actually. Because Evenlock is kind of a handlock in a weird way, isn't it? You like, kind of have to be, because yeah. your, your cards rely on having cards in hand, yeah. I mean, it's the same things that were in handlock, the Mountain Giants and the Drakes, it is the same deal. The difference is you're hitting people with them rather than sort of buffing up. Uh, but this is nice for New Zealand. They've found all of the removal they needed. Yeah, unlike Mitsuhide, I think it was the Netherlands who struggled with this deck where they didn't find any of that removal whatsoever. Somewhere in the south of England, Sottle is crying out. But Handlock was an aggro deck. <laughs> it wasn't. You stuck a giant and just lobbed it in the way of things. I mean, this even lock is a is weirdly aggressive as well. I yeah, think this is definitely an aggressive. We've we've said it before. It's kind of backwards in the way it works. Yeah. When you're not playing against a like an odd paladin, it's very different. Like this mountain giant would have been tapped its way into be playing on that turn three. But the second hellfire is going to make this next turn pretty easy. But look at the health total. Even though Singapore haven't done anything, and this is where New Zealand at some point are going to need to find a way to start the fight back because yeah, you've got to clear every board but also at some point Singapore will miss a step yeah I, but the thing is even though this board here looks relatively underwhelming we do need to see Ting Tong reply and it might be Mountain Giant into Sun Fury Protector here which is a, a, seems good. a really nice play onto the board but without that Sun Fury Protector this would be a struggle because you'd put the Mountain Giant and then suddenly a Fungal Mancer starts uh, changing things up. Yeah, and it's a shame for Singapore that they haven't got so anything to do next turn because the Fungal Man is not good enough. But this is the the spot we're saying about is find a way to get something on the board. Oh, they're not going to Sun Fury yet. Oh, yeah, they're not. And now um, your Fungal Man suddenly gets a little bit of uh, work done here if you want. Yeah, it's also a little bit of a bait for that Hellfire. Next turn, we're talking about having the, the play that Denmark made. Having a giant on the board versus nothing, because you Hellfire it all away. So we're hoping they're going to ignore this, and next turn you Hellfire, and you've got a giant and they've got nothing. Yeah, just starting to play a little bit more aggressively. <laughs> starting to get this game closer to being over in your favour, rather than just delaying to the point where you give the Paladin an opportunity to get through. Because realistically, if we get to turn 10, this should be a victory for the even lock. Yeah, it, Gul'dan is just so difficult to play against. Yeah, it, it just does way too much, even with that hero power. 
you can like ping down the dudes and you gain three health. Ugh. But Odd Pilot's hero power is relentlessly annoying. Right, let's see where they stick all this. Do they, they stick it walk in into the bait? They do. But they're going to say, okay, you want to hellfire this? We're going to leave all you next turn. Yeah, you do open yourself up. But they could... Uh, They'll Sun Fury after could the hellfire. hellfire, then Sun Fury. And then they have this giant, and again, back to that Denmark game. Giants kill you quick. So many possibilities. Singapore not running any silence in their paladin. There is Just a Void Ripper in there, though. That Divine Favor, that Void Ripper. Still two things that can do them good. What if New Zealand, well, New Zealand will be discussing here playing the Giants and Sun Fueling it, I guess. I that feels mighty that. dangerous. I think what's happened is they've talked about the Hellfire play, they've realised that's a good play, and now they're looking for something else, and Mountain Giant Sun Fury Protector is definitely something worth talking about. I think in theory it's better if you look at how much life total you're gaining, mm -hmm. if you consider Taunt a life total, then this is much more valuable. But level up is going to be pretty reasonable here. What else is there? Raid leader, dudes, righteous protector. Gives you a chance to get more dudes leveled up than just four. But four probably does it. Yeah, you are sacrificing probably a level up here if you are using it. I mean, you can make some trades. You can get rid of one of the mountain giants. Get rid of the 8-7. Yeah, leave yourself a 5-5 five, five and two three threes, all with taunt hanging about. Hmm. But it looks like New Zealand are going to be able to get this done, especially with that Hellfire in hand as backup. Reporting for duty. <laughs> and now New Zealand know exactly what's going on. <clears throat> and I wonder whether um, Singapore will make the trade with the second 5-5 five five into the second Mountain Giant if they were to go down that route. They are going to go for this other play, the one where they're just trying to get a bigger level up because Righteous Protector does its job pretty well. Nicely steered there, I think, for Singapore. Been really impressed with their play throughout this tournament, actually. Like, they don't miss much between them. Seems to be one of the teams that have solved the communication issues very well. And it's not just by being in the same room. You can see a lot of the time, only one or two people are ever talking. I wonder. And now with Homunculus being picked up here, you've got... Quite a few options just defensively. Bone Mare can arrive next turn. You don't really want to be coining anything out, mainly because you want to coin out Gul'dan on, on turn nine. So many possibilities. Yeah, that seems reasonable to me. But I think Hellfire just works so nicely here. Homunculus does come back if you're going to Gul'dan anytime soon as well. But four is not a good health total to be on, oddly enough. <laughs> Well, Singapore need to draw some cards and they need to do it quickly. So well, there you go. Get divine favour and everything's yeah, good. Draw some cards. If they do this, they can't level up and dudes this turn. But that only buys them time anyway. They just get munched through. Yeah, I mean, lethal being represented from Ting Tong next turn with the bone mare in hand. Mm. Well, we haven't seen that much bone mare lethals. As of late, we no, saw a lot of it back in the day. Setups. Yeah, I remember it used to be quite good. And they buffed it so it could go to even Warlock. It is crazy, actually, how mm. some of these nerfs and buffs have affected these even and odd decks. It is, yeah. Like, the the worst one, of course, Call to Arms, just completely destroyed it for multiple reasons. Yeah. But in its own right, the nerf seemed okay. But it just happened to work out that the nature of one drops in odd decks. And there we go, there is no defensive option available for Singapore. Unfortunately, they don't play their level up, or they don't have a chance really to play a level up. And Bone Mary is just going to represent lethal. Ting Tong finding this one for New Zealand. They're going to go 2-1 up.
in this series. One game away from getting into that top eight. Which will take them to BlizzCon. Bulgaria there. If it's Bulgaria and New Zealand get there, that definitely would be pretty surprising. Yeah, New Zealand, they've certainly done well so far in the tournament. They've taken down some pretty big teams. They've beaten Sweden, Portugal, Italy, for example. Yeah, their win yesterday was pretty good as well, Chinese Taipei. Yeah, taking down Chinese Taipei. I mean, like, this is the thing. When we get to this point in the tournament, even though we say, oh, it's a surprise that these teams are, that are here, now they are here, we have to just recognize that there are yes. some incredible players available. And to be honest, I think I've been fairly impressed with every team in the global games. Maybe not Kazakhstan. <laughs> <laughs> Kazakhstan has been a, a little bit weird, but uh, you know, they've been okay. Yeah, there's been one or two fairly mediocre players, I think. But as we get here now, we are into the top 16 teams. We're judging on scale, when we say one of the teams isn't that great, this is on the scale of you've got the USA, you've got some of these massive teams. New Zealand are a very good team full of very good players. Do not underestimate them. And if you do want to watch them a little bit more, make sure you stick around because we've got a break. We'll be back after this. New Zealand are winning two games to one in this quest for BlizzCon. And I've been allowed to host for the first time sitting in Falcone and Dan's chair. Dan, have you got a cushion on this chair or something? Yeah, I did think this chair felt a little bit smaller than usual. What are you doing down there? And less, and less comfy as well, might I add. It's a much comfier chair. I don't like this chair at all. There you go. There we go. Better? All sorted out now. Oh, I still... Wait, wait. Hold up. This is as high as it goes. See, this is why we don't do these this things. This is what it's like ask. on the analyst side. It's nice, isn't it, over there? Now you just... You've got a screen. You've realised how short I am told the world more to the point. The world knows. And, well, at least now when you meet me, you won't be disappointed, I guess, once you meet me in real life. Uh, what's the next game? What's the next, next game going to be? The next game is going to be the New Zealand on the Paladin, on the, the Egg, the Kangors, whatever you want to call it, taking on Odd Warrior, our favourite deck as casters throughout this tournament. I wonder whether we're going to call it, like, are we just going to call it Breakfast Paladin? Again. Again. Well, it's got meat well, wagon. Well, it has meat wagon and it has eggs. Typically meat and eggs, let's just call it Breakfast. We did that before. When it was a thing. Yeah, so why not again? We could. Let's go. I for think... I'll, I'll join you on this. I'm going to go for Breakfast Paladin. Yeah. I like it. Well, it, we haven't seen the deck enough for it to be maybe popular to gain a name. So can we popularize it? We could try. Well, let's have a look and see if New Zealand can popularize it amongst their whole community by winning and going to BlizzCon with it. We have already seen, I think it was yesterday actually, we saw Kangol's Endless Army used. We had the discussion of, well, it's not really an endless army because it can be summoned <coughs> and then it can die, but it's a pretty intimidating and scary one. But then we decided who's going to argue with Kangor about it because he wants it to be called the Endless Army. And who are we to fight him and his fairly legitimate army of a few minions? Of his big dinosaur egg scary mech things that just whack you in the face. Uh, but the trouble is, are these big mechs going to be able to whack you in the face when Odd Warrior typically does have quite a lot of removal? If they can save back uh, a Brawl and a Shield Slam for later on, they should be in a relatively comfortable spot. Yeah, I'm interested to see what speed New Zealand decide to try and build things out here. I want to see how fast they decide to go. Are they going to hurry it? Are they going to try and get the Warrior like, under early pressure? Or are they going to take their time and you know, get, get some big old eggs? Well, uh, uh, if they can encourage like brawls and removal out early with just like their first build of these beasts, then maybe when they resummon, suddenly the warrior has no answers. Azalina. Don't think it does that much in this one. I mean, Azalina in theory doesn't do much. Because the eggs are built ups. before you get to the Azalina, yes. so you've lost a lot of the power. The only thing it might do is if this goes all the way and gets to the point where suddenly Katsu Curry has nothing really left of value in his hand, you just play Azalina and steal some valuable things from your opponent instead. Yeah. It's been used so many different ways, and even now, I don't think, apart from outside of Togwaggle Druid, where it's got a very clear purpose, I don't think we've mastered the use of Azalina. I think we're just going to see more and more of Azalina over the coming months. I've heard people talking, I mean, right from when it was released, talking about putting it in aggro decks as a refill. Oh, wow, yeah. Like, just, just empty your hand with your face mage and go, I'll have some of this. What does this do? Oh, maybe pick up a weapon or something to, to keep going. Not a thing that worked, but it is used for multiple different things. But in, in control mirrors where you can just use it as a refill, that does seem to be a good place for her. 
Yeah, it works nicely in uh, multiple ways. I mean, it, the same for combo decks. If you shove it in a combo deck and you have a combo deck mirror, you can steal those combo pieces from your opponent. We saw Hunter Race yeah. putting Azalina in Maligos Druid, but not with Togwoggle. Yeah, for quite a while as well. He just liked it for extra stuff. Extra ways through. And he did pretty well. He's done well at Hearthstone, that kid, recently. He has indeed. Our first Hearthstone Master. Yeah, and he's, he he's two tier? stars already He's now. up to two star, yeah. A few of those coming in behind now, trying to get up there. They've got um, Saiyan and Muzzy, Fino. And they will get there. And it's going to be exciting once they do come up into Master. Because then we start to have Master Tournaments. And the Master Tournaments are going to be great. Uh, if you are watching at home and you don't really know what how the, the Master system works, basically once we've got enough players that have made it to One Star Master, Broadcasted master tournaments, I believe, will be had. Yeah, I was sort of hoping they would just give a one-player tournament for Hunter Ace alone. But they didn't do that. I hope he got some prize money or something, because I, I, I'm barely certain there is prize money for all these master tournaments. So he, Yeah, there will be. He'll be feeling uh, hard done by. As soon as they get to probably eight players, I, imagine, I, don't, I don't know. I have no insider information no. at all. But as soon as they get to something like eight players, I think we'll start seeing those tournaments and of course it will just be the very best players yeah it's gonna be oh, i'm so excited for that to actually start happening because that's something i think that's gone along unseen these points being gathered obviously we tell you so so has got this many points you go don't know what that means yeah, i don't care if they've got 142 yeah, points but you're going to start caring soon when these players start actually playing against each other for decent prize pools in small field tournaments and that's going to be a great thing to look forward to and again, we're not that far off. Hunter Ace is well on his way to three stars. Quite a few people on their way to two. And then there's a fairly big chasing pack as well. So we'll okay. find out how that goes down. We've got the first chance for New Zealand to make a big minion. Beg the question. Oh, oh, yeah, beg, a beg an answer from Singapore here by asking the question of, do you have removal? The answer is yes, they do have removal. <laughs> yes, but, I am an odd warrior. But... They don't have the armor to use a shield slam here. Another question as well for them is how long, and I think the answer is very long, by the way, are they going to keep this owl for? Because that's just going to be able to deal with one egg and the scary dinosaur all in one go yep. at some point. But that might be waited on until even after the Kangors is played much later in this game. Because the 7-9, while it's threatening, is not terrifying. It is if you look at it, but, you know. I have seen Even Paladin beat Odd Warrior because of Valinir. And now this isn't Even Paladin, but it is running Valinir. It is That's that a lot of value. It, so much value. Of course, those Iron Beak Owls might have to be used on that. On the minions that have the Valinir buff. Yeah. And then suddenly, if an Iron Beak Owl is used for that, then you can then play your egg. So it's, a, it's an interesting dance. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we have the Warrior list yeah, we, for Yeah, it's literally Singapore. the one deck we don't have the list for. We have everything else but Warrior. Uh, so I can't see if there's two owls, unfortunately. Yeah, I just grabbed the same piece of paper you did. It's like, eh. But thanks to the wonders of technology... Dan's going to cheat. I'm going to find out. Let me so Singapore, beginning their defence. The old thing with control decks. You all know this by now, but go say it anyway while Dan is busy owl hunting is to use the minimal amount you can in the early game because you're going to need that good stuff later. Confirmed two owls available for Singapore. Let me think. Um, anything else surprising in this warrior deck? Nothing really. Well, they're trying to get this owl to be used. Well, they're not. They're trying to get 14 damage to face is what they're doing. Yeah, this is a pretty scary amount of damage, to be honest. Yeah, that that demands an answer. More than demands, it's like... What's, what's one step over from demand? It enforces an answer. Yeah, okay. I don't That'll know do. if there is a further step than demands. Getting really angry. Insists? No. Insists. Yeah, insists will do. Well, that's about the same. Demand demands is insist, above insists. Yeah. Guarantees but an answer. Requires. Words. Words and answer. 
But if it isn't dealt with, they're dead. So therefore, an answer is needed urgently. And that is going to get the first owl into play. Board cleared, nothing to see here, except a load of really good stuff on the side of Jack Attack. <clears throat> yeah, so Jack Attack's done very well to encourage one of those owls out and in also encourage a shield slam as well. Valonir. Going to start the process all over again. And it's going to be a weird one now for Singapore because naturally you do just want to play Dr. Boom and gain that armor, start to get that influential hero power. But when you're at this lower life total, you are sometimes just wanting to keep your gain four armor every turn. Yeah, and how they balance that is going to be crucial to their success here or, or otherwise. And otherwise is looking pretty favored right now. And I think this Valonir has come at a good time. They've already got one of the owls out. If they can then yep. encourage another owl before any of their eggs have arrived, then New Zealand must be feeling pretty good about this match. Yeah, no counter-attacking options available at all for Odd Warrior. It is just a big punching bag. I wonder. Which little aggro decks can't punch through, but turns out that 14 eight scary clowns Pretty good. You wouldn't want that under your bed at night, that's for oh, sure. I'm not going to sleep now you said that. You're going to be thinking about, like, annoyer mods. Yeah. Uh, don't worry, the hotels here don't have anything under the beds. Like, there isn't a way. Are you sure? Yeah. They're, like, low low beds. They're only small clowns. Oh, like mini micro clowns. All right, now I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> no, you're not sleeping. I'll be fine, though. Because I'm, you know, we've seen that mini things would probably scare you more than me. Why? Because you're short. Well, they're just one of my people. <laughs> so you're going to sleep under the bed to make sure there's nothing there? Yeah, I just sleep with them. I'm just like, hey, one of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's the most ridiculous conversation we've managed in, in the five weeks we've worked <laughs> together, Dan. And we've had some ridiculous ones. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm actually an Annoyatron, Neil. I mean, that doesn't surprise me at all. I've been pretty annoyed most of the time, so... You know, I you say these things sometimes, but I, I can tell you don't mean it. How? It's the way you look at me. No, not like that. That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> An extra annoy module. Mmm, it's pretty nice. The magnetic, so important. I think this is one of the few decks which has really shown the strength of the mag magnetic abilities. Yeah, I'm glad that Magnetic wasn't everywhere. I'm glad it's being used. That's always the right balance. They're keeping it back so they don't end up losing one, so that the Kangor's is Endless only going to... Yeah. Mm. And uh, this is starting to get pretty problematic for Singapore. You need now the, the rush mechanic to really save you here. Yeah. Thankfully Dynamatic's going to do quite a lot. A yeah, thankfully, this. Dynamatic can get the job done. And he's going to have to. And I've got to say, they're pretty fortunate that the Valinir ended up on the Pyromancer rather than an Annoyer module. Because if it had ended up on an Annoyer module, suddenly this gets very difficult to deal with. Well, now we're going to find out. Yeah, now it does land on an Annoyer module. Singapore just battling to try and keep some semblance of board. Because if they lose it, you can see what happened last time. They had a bid on the board, and nope, take 14. Don't want that to happen again. <clears throat> Let me think. And I do want to see the rise of more Paladin decks. As you quite rightly pointed out, Odd Paladin has been the most popular Paladin deck in the Hearthstone Global Games, but we've seen even Paladin making an appearance. We've seen this, we've seen the OTK Paladin that Tice has piloted for the Netherlands these past couple of days. Unfortunately, the Netherlands knocked out of the global games. The Netherlands also a team that Singapore beat in the Swiss as well. Yeah, Singapore have not had it easy to get this far. They have played extremely well. I want to keep highlighting that. But we should be talking more about New Zealand because New Zealand is doing so close now to getting through. They are extremely close. A brawl is found as like a backup plan, but maybe you might even have to like 
faceless, this Onoya module. Yeah, it looks like a thing you might have to do. Did you see the flavor text on Giggling Inventor, by the way, that everybody ignored? Uh, no. Oh, so, um, I shall build a mighty golden paladin, and he will greet the world. Oh, wow. So it was... Uh, so they knew two months ago, or whatever it was. They were going to be making a, a hero card. Yeah. <sighs> and he will rule the world, and every, I think everyone knows that Paladin... He's going to greet the world. Paladin so he's just going to be full of Anoyatron heroes. Saying hello, hello, hello. He's got to, isn't oh. The greet is going to just go hello, hello, hello. Uh, Blizzard, if you're going to make these heroes, can you also add an auto-squelch function for me, please? <laughs> I feel like I'm going to need it. Oh. But yeah, they told us, and we ignored them. So you're right, he's having to face us this just to stay in it. And it is a pretty nice faceless. The fact that you can attach Ziliax, you've got some lifesteal now. Suddenly Singapore right back into it, and they were gifted the opportunity by New Zealand. And this faceless manipulator. Manipulator? Yeah. Manipulator. So I just stopped casting entirely there for a few seconds let you go on. I was thinking about Golden Paladin still. I was wondering why you were sweating profusely. That's just normal. <laughs> but these annoying modules are back <laughs> again. For Singapore, they've got through the first wave. I consider this game a little bit like a raid boss. Okay. Singapore, they, they've got through that first wave, they've now survived, but now they need to start wave two. Wave two is going to be the second amount of mechs just arriving onto the board, putting pressure. It's going to be the egg. It's going to be the Meccano egg getting built up yet again. If they get through phase two, you get to that final phase where suddenly Angle's Endless Army is played. And that's going to be terrifying. And but that they is keep a brawl, somehow, they might be in a good spot. Or the egg might kill them very soon. Yeah. Dynamatic. Yeah, not very good against eggs. Not very good against other mechs, unfortunately. You do still have rush with every uh, mech that you produce, but no way to kill kill off this 413. Got their own Valonir, of course, now. Hmm. Making things interesting. Thanks, thanks to Faceless. But no minion at the moment for uh, this Valonir to be plopped onto for Jack Attack. But really, uh, we're talking about that, but no danger we can see at the moment for Singapore. Singapore can't see it, so they're going to be pretty terrified. But actually, not a whole lot going on here for New Zealand. If four turn... Sure, it's nice, but it's not really threatening anything. Yeah, but it can get scary very quickly. <clears throat> yes, um, it can. If we see, for example, another war gear drawn off the top, the fact that Oof. New Zealand have seen Katsu Curry can't deal with this board, can't deal with this big egg, this egg can just get larger. Do you expect that to do something there? Singapore looked a little bit... Or well, are they trying to set up Valonir on Azelina? Which is something I didn't think I'd ever want to happen. I wonder. Yeah. Pretty underwhelming turn, though, for New Zealand now here. Reporting for duty. And I think Katsu Curry is going to get an idea of... They don't have a minion in their hand. Otherwise, they would be attacking with this Valonir. They would be killing off this 3-4 for sure. Yep. But now by playing this Silver Hand Recruit, you are opening up potential for Brawl shenanigans. But it, we did say they wanted to encourage out these Brawls. You can work out pretty much their entire hand here. Like, what don't you play for 10 mana? So you don't play Kangles. That's one. Yep. And you don't play Uther. You don't play Uther because you, you don't have a minion. Because you get rid of the weapon. So I think they can work out this hand very, very close to exacties here. But what you do about it, even if you can see it, is a little bit more problematic right now. So they could go like Spark Engine into Brawl if they wanted to. 
something along the lines of that. Oh, that yeah, these balls are going to be here forever, which means Azelina's here forever. Hmm. Do you get two of them? Um, like the yeah, they're just going to chew through the egg slowly, but surely. Before it gets too big, before, because this Kangol is currently pretty terrifying. Try and get some smaller stuff in that pool. Oh! You did mention it. Egg's going to get bigger. And you can... Uh, wait, oh, uh, you can, how what? does... Uh, okay, so this is an interaction. I'm not asking you. This is just okay. an interaction I'm unsure of. So you use Valinir now. Then Wargear gets the Death Rattle, but then you use the Let me magnetic effect. Does the Egg also get the Death Rattle? I knew this, and now I don't. I mean, well, we'll, we'll find out. We will find out. I'll be honest, I put my hands up in the air. I've not played an incredible amount of this Paladin deck, which I'm sure not many people have either. I played it quite a bit when Muzzy first was going to take it to an event. I thought I'd better learn this. And, but that's long, you know, quite a bit being just a day. I mean, or I would imagine it retains all of its Death Rattle abilities, mm -hmm. and suddenly this is one big, scary, huge, gigantic minion with Valinir stuck inside it. There's no owl at the moment. Oh, do you what, hero power? Why do you hero power there when Brawl is like the only out? I think that's a bad hero power, and I think you can. The face of Jack Attack probably suggests. I mean, it. it's autopilot, right? You just hit it every yep. turn as Paladin or most classes these days. But yeah, he's possibly just hero powered his way out of BlizzCon. Uh, I mean, if you do. This would be a good time even if you lose this Brawl, you've got to remember that popping out of this egg is also a big old giant 8 8. <laughs> No, it doesn't make that noise. It's more of like a... No, that's also not what noise it makes. No. Something more intimidating. All right, that's as good as you're going to get, clearly. It's pretty scary. Okay. As is this brawl for a jack attack, having just pressed that hero power button. This 1-1 one -one lives. This might go down in history. But the 1-1 one -one doesn't live. The egg lives. Which just means that's going <laughs> to, what, send New Zealand to BlizzCon? Whoa, it's so close. They go up to 17, but double they have double consecration available. Jack attack there. Like. They can run the Attorney Rover in, though. They can gain two armor. They can put themselves up to 19. Well, they leave it there because consecration would have to hit it twice. Either's fine, I guess. New Zealand so close here. A magnetic effect might get them there. That doesn't quite. But Uther off the. Oh, they're so close! Yeah, that's why they had to run it in, because it would have been 18. So, again, Singapore knowing exactly what was up, but it's not going to stop it. Surely they've got no way out of this one. This delivery drone is going to have to deliver more than stuff. It's going to have to deliver lots of stuff. Mechanical whelp. A 2-2 and a 7-7 with a spark engine. I don't even think that actually saves you here, because even if you kill it, you're just dead. New Zealand are going to BlizzCon. They have qualified for this final eight. Jack Attack, it's bittersweet for him. And I'm sure the whole New Zealand team are going to be absolutely delighted with that one. Commiserations to Singapore. They do drop to the lower bracket. They will still have another chance. But we have our second team going to BlizzCon. And that, alongside Bulgaria, New Zealand are going to be there. And... That's two years in a row that they've put in a fantastic performance in this tournament. And I think this is great to see them going, not just because they deserved it this year, but also um, a reward for last year on top of this year. Fantastic to see them there. And a bit of redemption from their week one shenanigans with Shudderwalk. And it is amazing to see this Paladin performing well as well. Something different from the old Paladin, a little bit off meta. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the final matchup screen so you guys can see how exactly everything played out. Uh, New Zealand, I mean, they're just going to be over the moon with this one. They found the victory with the Shaman against Mage early on. There was a little speed bump when Sequinox and his priest came to play. They even had to work for that one. They did, indeed. Uh, but this Paladin getting work done in Game 4. I mean, what a moment for Jack Attack and what a moment for New Zealand. There was some question questionable play of uh, hitting that hero power. And putting that 1-1 one, one on the board, but I that mean... That was terrifying. If your 13-17 egg is going to survive the brawl, well, I'm sure you don't really mind. And then. Singapore didn't respect that deck. It was the ninth pick in the pick ban phase, so perhaps they were hoping it wouldn't run into their Odd Warrior, obviously. I mean, and you'd have to think, with an Odd Warrior, you have a good chance. You've got a lot of removal available, double owl. 
But the fact that those annoying modules were able to come out early, like they they forced that owl out there. Yeah. Some fantastic play from New Zealand, and we can see all this play yet again with some highlights here. Started off with Pathra. Yeah, playing the Shutter Walk, and I bet they're pleased to get a fantastically played Shutter Walk game under their belts. Right from the start, knew exactly what they're trying to do. Not an easy matchup here for the Shutter Walk, in my opinion. And even those who have different opinions don't go further than, say, 50 50. But they never looked in any danger from about turn three onwards. There was just one spot where this lot gathered um, and there was no healing in the hand for Pathra, where maybe it looks slightly dangerous, but really, New Zealand looked in control all the way. Throughout the whole series, I was impressed with how, to be fair, both teams played. The only real time I was scratching my head was probably in that final game with the hero power, to be honest. That was a very terrifying moment. And I think even Jack Attack's face uh, suggested he wasn't quite sure on it. But this was a nice Priest game from Singapore. Um, as someone who has been playing a little bit of Control Priest as of late, I do like these matchups where you have to try and survive for as long as possible and find that lethal right at the end. But then a more comfortable game for New Zealand, you'd think, is the Evenlock versus the Paladin, but Singapore, they pushed them all the way. Yeah, New Zealand had a few interesting decisions to make, and again, it revolved around what we were discussing at the time, is make sure you can stick some minions, otherwise the Paladin just keeps pressing the button. And press the button, they do, but it wasn't able to get them far enough, and then we got to this beautiful game, a 14-8 being made on what, turn six for Jack Attack and New Zealand. And uh, I tell you what, if this brawl had gone wrong, then maybe there could have been a chance for Katsu Curry, but there still would have been an 8-8 coming out yeah. of that um, that egg anyway. So it, I still think New Zealand would have got there. New Zealand just, I mean, I love seeing this. I love seeing a deck that isn't typically seen on ladder a lot perform well on the big stage, especially when it gets you to that top eight. Yeah, <laughs> no one happier than Jack Attack right there, I shouldn't think at the moment. And Katsu Curry, Going to have to take its chances another day against either the USA or Chinese Taipei. Not where you want to be. Not really where you want to be, but you can see what it, the faces of the Singapore players as well. Like that, there is a lot of disappointment, and I, I'm not surprised. I mean, when you are that close to getting to the top eight, and then it's just ripped away from you like that, you don't want to go for that second chance. You want to just hit it first time. It is the same deck though, so if they run into the USA again, maybe they've got the same chance of getting it done again. Maybe they will. Well. Someone who's going to be extremely happy is Pathra, and we do have Pathra for an interview. Uh, I'm expecting to see a big smile here because you guys should be absolutely elated with that one. You go into BlizzCon, I mean, I have to ask you the age-old question, what's going through your head right now? Oh, can you guys hear me? Yes, 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 we can. Okay, okay, we're just making sure. Because um, I just, you guys were cut off at the start. Um, oh my god, I, I'm still, sh like, going into this match, I was really nervous and scared, and I'm still nervous. Like, it's just hitting us now. Because <laughs> that that last match with the Paladin was just like a roller coaster. We're like, do we, are we going to do it? Are we going to beat them? Like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. I, I It hasn't really fully sunk in. I'm just still scared. <laughs> and I mean, I was scared when the hero power was pressed, when you had the big egg on the board as well. Was that a mistake? Yes. Yeah, well, we were like, don't hero power, and then, you know, it, then was, it, was, it was just like a last minute, like, decision, because we were just so focused on the egg for a really long time. Yeah, but I, it, it turned out great in the end, because it was, all, it was all planned, because the egg came out on top in that brawl. And um, whose idea was it to bring that deck? And in fact, between you four, who, who is the lineups person in general? Um, all of us actually, um, but that the the person who was really behind that paladin was Jack specifically. And then I was just like, okay, let's see if Mage will will let Jack take this. <laughs> and then Mage was like, all right, you can take it. But like Mage uh, put Void Rippers in there, which ended up being like a really awesome thing because we pushed like how much damage to face at a, one point. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Did you personally this year find it helpful to have played last year and help to organizing the team as well? For sure, it helped a, a lot being in HGG last year because um, the format changed just a little bit, like with the whole banning stuff. But other, like they're still like bringing all nine decks and working with other people and like organizing, making sure 
people I, I was I'm just always really good with the with the, the schedules and pinning pinning it like hey guys be here like an hour earlier <laughs> and we uh we do get the pleasure of seeing every time the global game starts you actually feature in that video you're starting to get a little bit annoyed just to see yourself laughing every single time I know it's my laugh like I mean yeah it was a really funny moment it's okay. We have to watch Falcone also say hi there, which annoys me every oh, single time. Hi there. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, massive congratulations to you guys. Thank BlizzCon you so much. is going to be incredible. Uh, have an amazing time and well done again on top eight. Thank you. Bye Thank guys. you. Take care. And uh, yeah, very cheery as no as surprise. They she's, she's cheery all the time anyway, like double cheery today with. But I think that we could have interviewed amazing result. Any New Zealand player there, and they're all going to be all smiles, I imagine. Apart from Jack Attack, who's lying on the floor going, oh, no, yeah. thank God. Why did I hero power? <laughs> but I mean, you, you're not playing the odds, but sometimes I don't know, there's nothing. It's just like automatic. It's you like you just that, press the yeah. button sometimes, like in any deck that does that. You just get into the habit of pressing the button. You're under pressure. You're under time pressure. You just pass turn, hit the end turn before you go. As you roll a pen across to me, uh, let's take a look at all of the groups thus far, though, in this last 16, and see how everyone is lining up. We are starting to rattle through them now. We are getting closer to sending all eight teams to BlizzCon. Group A sees Portugal and Spain sat in the winner's bracket, whereas Brazil, who went undefeated in the Swiss, are down in that lower bracket with Chile. Yeah, they got absolutely massacred yesterday by Portugal in two and a half hours. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it's the slowest massacre of all it time. It was a long one. And then we had our first team going to BlizzCon. It was Bulgaria. They beat the boys of the United Kingdom in a 3 2 slobber knocker. And now we have a deciding match of UK and Hong Kong a for rematch. that BlizzCon spot. It is a rematch. And with this pick band, with the, the lineups being open and being the same decks, because it's such a lengthy pick band process, it'd be interesting to see if anything changes there. Uh, it did mean the Netherlands were eliminated, which of course I'm sure a lot of people are disappointed by as we move now to Group C. And there it is, that crown above New Zealand's head. Their breakfast paladin gets them to BlizzCon. And now they can probably go and enjoy breakfast. What time is it over there in New Zealand? What is know. it over here at the moment? I don't even know what time it is here. It's stupid o'clock right now. But so it's stupid o'clock plus 11, I think it is over there. Something like that, maybe 9. Next week, Chinese Taipei will face off against the United States to have a chance to go up against Singapore for a spot at BlizzCon. And then the last group, the group that has been called the Group of Death, sees Norway and China going up against each other to get to that top eight. And down in the bottom, it's Ukraine and Switzerland. Ukraine, another team, last year's runners-up. They need to win two games on the bounce if they're going to get to BlizzCon. Yeah, but Norway and China will be looking over their shoulders like, yeah, we've got a game to get in. But if we don't, there's Ukraine. And Switzerland haven't been messing around this year either. Switzerland, working very well as a team, got quite a lot of experience behind them. They're a team that... Until I saw that group, I'd been bigging up quite a lot. And then I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll back down a touch now because that group is so powerful. I mean, incredibly powerful. I mean, I've said it countless times. The fact this last six, last 16 ugh, is so stacked is absolutely insane. But it's going to be an emotional little time now, Neil, for us. Um, emotional because this is our last week at Hearthstone Global Games. Unfortunately, we're not going to be here next week. So I guess, what's been your highlight of the Global Games this year? I think for me it was the Swamp King Dread Swamp taking King down Dread. the Mechathun. And obviously working with you in general has, despite what you guys think, is an absolute pleasure to work with Dan. He puts up with me. It's pretty impressive. I have to say when uh, we got put as a pairing, I think we both went, oh, yeah. you know what? We've worked together enough. Is, that, is our kind of humor going to go together? But it has. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been fun, man. Rinder, it's been absolutely beautiful. But with that... I think we're going to wrap up this week of the Global Games. It's been an amazing one. We've sent two teams to BlizzCon, which is just absolutely insane. The fact that it's Bulgaria and it's New Zealand already going to BlizzCon. But six more next week. Six more next week, indeed. And make sure you tune in. I think Monday will be when the community show is, as it always is. And it'll be the last community show before BlizzCon, as far as I'm aware. So a very important one. Make sure you show them your support. Get in there. Get cheering with your bits. But from us here, from me and Lorinda, from Falcone and Darok, who didn't turn up today because it was they didn't need to. We only had the one game. Production and all of Blizzard, have a wonderful evening, morning, or afternoon, wherever you may be in the world. And we'll see you next week. Take care.